Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Priyanka, lecturer in prosthetic dentistry here in PIDC. Today's topic is looting agents and cementing procedures. So after the end of the lecture, you will be able to identify, compare, uses, composition, characteristic of different cements. So to introduce the topic, looting means moldable substance to seal a space or cement two components together. Many dental processes, appliances uh, necessitate attachment by means of looting agents such as metal ceramic, metal composite, ceramic restoration, provisional acrylic restoration, laminate, veneers, ortho appliances pins and posts used for retention of restorations. They all provide a link between the supporting restoration and prepared teeth by acting as adhesive. So coming to the ideal requirements, so it should have good adhesion, long working time, it should be non-toxic to the pulp, it should have adequate strength, it should have low viscosity and solubility, and Compressive, it should be compressive into thin layers. Coming to the type, so we can divide broadly into short term cements and long term cements. In sh short term cements, there is zinc oxide eugenol with and without ethoxy benzoic acid. Long term cementation, it consists of zinc phosphate, zinc polycarboxylate. Then glass inomer, which can be divided into resin, modified GIC, and compomers. And then the resin cements. Factors affecting the looting cements. So coming to the mixing time, uh, we usually follow the uh, manufacturer's direction for mixing time and working time and the delivery time. So we can read in the manual. These time are set. Humidity, so humidity is um, if in a clinical area uh, is warm or humid, uh, there can be premature exposure to the cement and uh, it can create loss of water from the liquid or an addition of moisture to the powder. So coming to the powder and liquid ratio, uh, Either if we incorporate any of the materials in the wrong ratio, it can alter the consistency. The temperature, some types of cements put off an exothermic reaction uh, with and without ethoxy benzoic acid. So reinforced ZOE cement is extremely biocompatible and provides a very good seal. However, the physical properties are generally inferior to those of the other cements. And uh, that EBA, ethoxy benzoic acid, is a modifier which replaces a portion of eugenol in conventional zinc, so uh, zinc oxide eugenol cement and it improves the compressive strength without affecting its resistance to deformation. So the cement should only be used in restorations with good retention and uh, also, it emphasizes good compatibility and pulp protection. So EBS cements has a relatively short working time and uh, then access cement is also very difficult to remove. So it can either come in a powder and liquid form or a two-paste system. So the types are can be classified into type 1, 2, 3, and 4. Also, type 1 and type 2 are used for temporary and uh, type 3, type 4 are used for long-term cementation. So coming to the compositions, so these are very set. We have to actually memorize and learn the compositions for all the cements. Uh, there's not much uh, we can change or discuss in this, uh, but uh, here goes uh, powder and liquid. So first is the powder. So it's zinc oxide and 69%, which is the principal ingredient. Then comes the white rosin, which is 29.3%. It reduces the brittleness of the cement. Then 
then comes the zinc uh, serate, uh, which is uh, uh, sorry, stearate, which is uh, one percent, and it's an accelerator and plasticizer. Then comes the zinc acetate, that is zero point seven percent. It's an accelerator and improves strength. Magnesium oxide, which is added into powder, acts similar to zinc oxide with eugenol. In the liquid, there is eugenol, which is 85%. It reacts with zinc oxide. Then is olive oil, which is 15%. It's a plastic. Coming to the manipulation, so it is in type 1, is two-phase system. So equal length of the accelerator and base paste are to be dispensed on a cool glass slab or the pad. And uh, the paste are colored differently. And when you mix it, you get a uniform color. So in type 2, there is a powder and liquid form, uh, which is 4 is to 1 or 6 is to 1. Great. Okay, coming to the next cement is zinc phosphate. So this is a traditional or the oldest looting cements available. Uh, it is also one of the popular ones for cast restorations. It has adequate strength and reasonable working time. Uh, and access cement can be easily removed. It comes as powder and liquid in two separate bottles. It can, it is classified in type one and type two and can be used for looting purposes, both of the types. Compositions are given as follows, the powder and the liquid, and these are certain components which um, you can read and go through. So it is, in short, it is zinc oxide, magnesium, other oxides, silica. So that is in the powder form. And in the liquid is phosphoric acid, water, zinc phosphate, aluminum, and zinc. So you can see the percentage and the functions of zinc. Coming to the manipulation. So it has a powder and liquid ratio. That is 1.4 grams uh, by 0.5 ml. Mixing time is 1 minute, 15 seconds. Again, a cool glass slab is used to delay the setting, so it is advisable and allow more powder to be incorporated before the matrix formation occurs. Liquid should be dispensed just before mixing. Powder is added in small increments. Large areas covered during mixing to release heat. Coming to zinc polycarboxylate. So one of the biggest advantages of this agent is its relative biocompatibility. Zinc polycarboxylate cement also exhibits specific addition to tooth structure because it chelates the calcium. The working time of this cement is much shorter than zinc phosphate. And this may create a problem when multiple units are to be cemented and it is a little difficult to remove as compared to zinc phosphate. So again, these are the compositions, uh, zinc phosphate uh, cements composition. Um, so it's a first cement system that was developed as adhesive bond to tooth structure. Uh, coming to the powder and the liquid uh, composition, that is the zinc ox oxide which is a basic ingredient. ingredient. Magnesium oxide is the principal modifier or it aids into the sintering. Then there are oxides and stenaceous fluoride, which increases the strength, modifies setting time and anti-carogenic properties. So the liquid. So it is a liquid solution of polyacrylic acid or copolymer of acrylic acid with unsaturated carboxylic acid, which are ketoconic acid, malic acid, and tricarbolic acid. So coming to the manipulation, so tooth structure should be cleaned properly and uh, in order to have a good contact, and uh, there should be uh, a proper uh, intimate contact and interaction between the cement and the tooth, followed by, uh, yeah, sorry, between the cement and the tooth by 10% poly polyacrylic solution, acid solution, followed by rinsing with water, and that is 1 to 3% can be used. And uh, then the tooth is dried and isolated. Uh, the 
powder liquid ratio is 1.5 is to 1 by weight. Mixing is done on a cool glass slab or a paper pad. Powder may be cooled, but liquid cannot as its viscous viscosity increases. So powder and liquid are taken on a glass slab. Liquid is removed just prior to mixing and uh, as the uh, viscosity will increase. Powder is incorporated in large quantities with a stiff cement spatula and remaining powder is added to adjust consistency. So mixing can be done for 30 to 40 seconds. The cement should be used uh, when the surface is still glossy. Once the cement becomes a little tacky, it no longer wets the tooth surface. So it should be used at the correct time. Coming to the next cement is glass inomer, which is widely used. Uh, it is a generic name of material based on the reaction of silicate glass powder and polyacrylic acid. So the name comes from the glass powder and inomer that contains carboxylic acid. The cement adheres to enamel and dentine and exhibits good biocompatibility. Uh, it's available in nine types, of which the type one is the dentine type. Okay, so coming to the composition, it has a powder and liquid component. Uh, the powder is calcium fluoro alumino silicate glass. And then uh, comes the other ingredients, which are strontium, barium, and zedenoi, and lanthanum. Uh, these all provide the radio opacity. Coming to the liquid component, that is the aqueous solution of polyacrylic acid, which is 45 to 50 percent. Uh, the other components are copolymer with itaconic acid, malic acid, and tricarboxylic acid. It increases the reactivity and decreases the viscosity and also decreases the gelation. Tartaric acid is the last component. It improves the handling properties and improves mix working time. Coming to the manipulation, so the powder to liquid ratio is 1.25 is to 1 gram. Mixing time is 45 to 60 seconds. So um, the consideration for long-standing retention, surface of the tooth must be clean and dry, absolutely dry. Consistency of mixed cement must allow complete coating of the surface and uh, complete seating of processes. Access cement should be removed at a proper time. Protection of restoration surface must be ensured to prevent any cracking or dis. So the powder and the liquid ratio recommended man manufacturer should be followed. A cool and dry glass slab is or paper pad can be used, which extends the working time. Powder and liquid should be dispensed on glass slab before mixing. Otherwise, the acid-base ratio will be altered. Powder should be incorporated into liquid uh, rapidly with the plastic spatula. Mix should have a glassy appearance, which indicates unreacted polyacid on the surface. Also, uh, the dull surface indicates inadequate acid for bonding. So the appearance should be glassy as well. Okay, coming to the next cement, that is the resin modified GIC hybrid inomer. Resin modified glass inomer were introduced in the 1990s as an attempt to incorporate the glass inomer properties uh, which is a bit the higher strength and low solubility of resins. So these materials are less susceptible to early moisture exposure than glass inomer and currently among one of the popular materials used in general practice. The material exhibits higher strength than the conventional cement so resin modified glass inomer should be avoided with all ceramic restorations because it can be associated with fracture of the restorations which is caused by water absorption and expansion also there are dual cure and tri cure
types. Okay, coming to the composition. So it is divided into powder and liquid. The powder component is iron leachable fluoroaminosilicate glass particles. Then the initiator is light or chemical curing. Liquid is water. Polyacrylic acid modified with methacrylate or hydroxymethylmethacrylate monomer, uh, which is responsible for the polymerization. Coming to the manipulation, so the powder to liquid ratio is 1.6 is to 1 grams. Working time is 2.5 minutes. The po powder is fluffed before dispensing. Liquid is dispensed by keeping while vertical to mixing pad. The powder is incorporated into liquid within 30 seconds uh, to give a mousse-like con consistency. The cement is applied to clean, dry tooth surface and uh, no coating agent is required. Coming to the next cement that is a compomers. So the search for material that has fluoride releasing capacity, capability sorry, of a conventional GIC and durability of composites has led to a new material that is polyacid modified composite or compomers. It has the ability to release fluoride under acid base reaction in the presence of saliva. Composition is provided as one paste light curable material sensitive to moisture so packaged in moisture proof pouch. The contents are silicate glass particles, sodium chloride, and polyacid modified monomer without any water. Two component materials. So it has a two component material which consists of powder and liquid. The powder and the liquid compositions are as follows. Strontium, aluminium, fluorosilicate, metallic oxide, and chemical, chemically or light activated initiators. These are in the powder. In the liquid, on the other hand, is poly, polymerizable, a methyl methacrylate, a methacrylate, sorry, or carboxylic acid monomer, and multi, multifunctional acrylate monomer. And water. Coming to the manipulation, for one paste system, tooth, tooth should be etched before application of the bonding agent and the cement. Finishing or restoration requires same procedure which we did with the resin composites. For two paste systems, cement mix is placed onto the prosthesis and the process is seeded with finger pressure. After 90 seconds, 90 seconds there is the end of the mixing the material should reach a gel stage and access cement should be removed the margin should be light cured and the process should be stabilized the chemical cure should co be complete uh sorry the the chemical cure should complete the setting reaction in approximately three minutes in the oral cavity and uh, it takes 10 minutes uh, in a normal air for it to settle down to set coming to resin cements so these have become popular because of the development of direct filling resins with improved properties so benefit of acid edge technique for attaching resins to enamel and the potential to bond to dentine conditioned with organic or inorganic acids these are essentially fluorable composites of low viscosity. So the composition is chemically activated resin cements, which is available in powder and liquid or toothpaste. Light activated resin cement, they are single component light curable resin based composites. So the contents are a resin matrix with silane uh, sorry, treated in organic fillers. Fillers are silica or glass particles and uh, are used as microfilled resins. And uh, uh, lastly is dentine curable. So first we'll see the chemically activated resin cements. So the powder and liquid are combined by mixing it on the paper pad for 20 to 30 seconds. Any access cement is removed. 
uh, and of course it's best to remove it immediately after the processes has been seeded properly um, it's also suitable for all types of processes light trans transmitting processes thicker than 2.5 mm should be bonded chemically coming to the light curable resins used for cementation of thin ceramic processes resin based processes and direct bonding of ceramic and plastic orthodontic brackets where the thickness of appliance is less than 1.5 mm thereby allowing adequate transmission of light so the time of exposure to light should never be less than 40 seconds access to cement should be removed as soon as the seating is completed so this is one chart which you all can have a look it has the list of loading agents the advantages the chief concerns and the precautions to be taken so you all you all can have a, you know look at this okay coming to the preparation of the restoration and the tooth surface for cementation so uh, the the performance of loading agents is degraded if the material is contaminated by any of the following subs liquids which is blood saliva or water therefore the restoration and tooth must be carefully cleaned and dried after the trying procedure and uh, any access although excessive drying of the teeth must be avoided before the initiation of cement mixing isolation or isolating the area of cementation cleaning and drying the tooth is mandatory however the tooth should never be excessively desiccated uh, over drying can lead to post-operative sensitivity so coming to the cementation procedures for ceramic veneers and inlays so we have to carefully handle these and uh, starting with the, the procedure some bonding is achieved by performing certain steps so firstly etching the fitting surface of ceramic with uh, hydrofluoric acid secondly applying a silane coupling agent to the ceramic thirdly etching the enamel with phosphoric acid fourthly applying a ceramic bonding agent to edged enamel and silane fifth to seat the restoration with composite resin looting agent so we need to follow that process now coming to the cementation procedure of metal ceramic crowns so first of all the preparation should be thoroughly cleaned um, make sure all the provisional looting agent is removed it can be removed by explorer um, any of the air abrasion uh, with the air abrasion or steam cleaning or ultrasonic scalers so and the margin has to be inspected properly so we can have a correct seating of the crown so the cement is mixed according to the manufacturer's recommendation the restoration are seated to place with a firm rocking pressure okay so after all after any cementation procedure we give post cementation instructions so you have to keep few things in mind that is you can inform the patient to exercise all the functions um, and to make the patient aware of the initial discomfort which may be present and uh, also sudden impact forces should be avoided by the patient Oral hygiene maintenance is mandatory and regular recall visits and checkups are required. So thank you very much for patient 